have quite, you know, uh, today we will be starting with um, radioactivity. Okay. So let's let's look at that then. So, as far as this um, radioactivity is concerned, it is one of the most simplest chapter. Okay. So now see this. Radioactivity is defined as the random and spontaneous decay of an unstable radioactive nucleus to form a more stable nucleus or nuclei. This results in giving out alpha beta and slash or so it could one it could be one or more gamma radiation okay now <laughs> the thing is that there are two words that i've used which are basically random uh oh not this one wait random and spontaneous so we need to know what exactly they mean right so for random we would say that it is like Moise I have uh, posted lectures okay for you uh, did you see oh yes sir it refers to probability of decay of any or all nuclei at any given time. So usually uh, in a curve, right, this is represented by random fluctuations on decay curve so remember that okay i'll show you that too so then what's spontaneous mean is that it is the decay is unaffected by any external factors such as pressure temperature, force, etc. Right? So, no matter you try to beat, you know, it a lot, it won't, you know, decay unless it wants to. So, that's fine. So, this is represented by the trend of the graph Remember that, okay? Now, in reality, when you look at a decay curve, so you can write it down, please, and then I'm going to go forward. Um, Suman, do you understand this? Ramen, Gatika? Okay. 
So when you draw the curve of this decay, so on that side you might, might have number or mass or anything like that, activity or something like that. And then the curve is like an exponential curve. Exponential curve is drawn like this. But this is not a smooth line. It's basically like it's basically like this. Like the, the, it has like uh, spikes, random spikes like this. Okay. So this spike, which is basically the actual line, is the it tells you about the random nature, which means sometimes it, like more decay, sometimes less. But this line, the red one, is the trend. And trend shows uh, spontaneous nature. Um, sir? Yes? Uh, yes? So is there a way to store any radioactive element? Store them? Because if it's it's uh, always spontaneous, yeah. yeah. So I think like they uh, store it in one of those glass containers so it doesn't decay. That 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 cannot happen. It will decay. Um, okay. Even if you put it in a glass container, you put it everywhere. It will still manage to decay. You can't save it. Do you get my point? So unlike chemistry, yeah. like there, there's no reactant or you cannot put a catalyst, you cannot force it, right? You can't do anything about it. All you can do it, it can come naturally. So it's like, it's going, it's coming out, it's going to happen naturally whenever it wants to. So for example, if it decays on your birthday and then you want it to decay again on your birthday, that's not going to happen. It might, it might not. Okay. That's the point. Yes, sir. Sir, why is it an exponential curve? What is it trying to show? It is an exponential curve means that basically uh, it the, the function of uh, decay is uh, basically comes out from an exponential value. We're going to do that, okay? That's why it's like the trend is like this. Okay. I'm going to do this. Don't worry. Right now, do you understand this? Okay then. Now let's first of all look at the probability of decay. So probability of decay is like taken out by delta n over n. Delta n means this basically those who take math. This d means change. So you can uh, also write it as change in n over n. Basically it means how many particles decayed over the total ratio, right? So it's like a ratio, okay? Like if I say, oh, all right, how many times do you play? Uh, okay, so I, if I say there are like seven matches every week for cricket, how many times do you play? So you say, okay, I play three matches out of seven, right? So just like that, how, what is the probability? And then we can look at decay rate and decay rate is also called the decay constant. So it means that now we have the probability of decay and then if we divide it by the time it becomes the rate. So um, you can write it as like lambda given as lambda. So the change in n over n divided by change in t. For math people it is dn like derivative of n over n over derivative of time function right. It's the same thing derivative is just change. Is it clear? Yes sir. Now we can also define this we can say okay it is the probability of disintegration because uh, actually it is disintegrating, right? Disintegration per unit time. 
it is a scalar quantity it's just going to show you a number and it is measured in second inverse right like that now from from now on i just want to tell you this very very important thing i'm going to show you uh, a derivation like math people can uh, use it but uh, for non math people it's not required to learn okay it's fine so first of all when you see the whole thing lambda yes mm mhm Hello, I'll talk to you later. Hello, my bad. Hmm. Okay. All right. So if I multiply n on that side, so it becomes like this, and then I have to put a negative sign. Now, this negative sign, I'm putting it intentionally because. when you find the change right like it is sort of a decreasing curve if you see the curve the number of particles are decreasing with respect to the original you know radioactive element so what we're saying is that this negative sign negative shows the number of particles reduce which means that for example if uh 5 minutes ago they were like uh 100 now after 5 minutes they might be like 95 so when you do 95 minus 100 it will give you this change will give you uh, a negative value that's why we have put a negative sign just to you know it's a scalar quantity that's why now from this point onwards those uh, like you can also you know uh, this just means change in n over change in t that's the same thing but what i'm saying is from this point onwards whatever i'm going to do uh, it's not in your course i'm just doing it because you should understand why uh, it is like important to know that how it is an exponential curve just to satisfy my ego okay <laughs> so now check this out so if i keep it this way like if i multiply like lambda dt equals to dn over minus n from this so i can do that right i can just replace them like this so uh the math people can understand when there are two derivatives on this side every side so you can take an integral so the integral will be like this with respect to time right of the noise Yes, sir. And this will be like minus uh, n over n not. N not is the starting number. N is the current number. Like this. And then uh, when you integrate it, this is going to be basically uh, with limit of t to t zero t, and this is going to be minus one upon n is a function of ln, right? Well, I can teach maths too. Why don't I though? Okay, l n n like this. Now, what you're going to do is this becomes lambda because t and zero is just zero, so lambda t, and this becomes as minus um, one value is n minus in the starting value n not, and then you can take minus on that side, so lambda t minus is going to give you. Um, Minus function shows you like l n n over n not because that's a derivative, right? Is it clear? Like you can uh, yeah. when there's a subtraction in logs. Now what you can do is you can take um, exponential. So when you take exponential like this, l n goes away and this becomes n over n not like that. So ultimately we're gonna get an equation which is. n equals to n not e minus lambda t and this is what 
everybody in this class must remember this is the general thing all right the derivation is not required it's basically purely maths calculus not in your course so only this section so what i mean by this is there could be three different quantities right this formula can come in three different ways the first way is n equals to n naught e minus lambda t the second is a equals to a naught e minus lambda t and third one is m equals to m naught e minus lambda t because these three quantities change side by side i'm going to put it in a box for you guys to remember now first of all i just want to tell you this n is the number of particles at time t whenever you looked at it okay whereas n naught is basically equal to the initial number of particles and uh, lambda is the decay constant as uh, you have just learned and of course t is the time so for a naught um, a is a naught is the activity i'm going to tell you what activity is in a bit at time t and um, a naught is the initial activity and this is like the uh, rest of the things are same. For m, m is the mass at time t, mass of that material, and m naught is the initial mass. And the rest of the things are same, right? So if you notice this uh, function, the exponential function, is basically very similar to. Um, the one with uh, you know in uh, when we learned about the decay curves of capacitance so it was the same is that clear abdul rafi suman ramin hmm. yes okay yes, does the decay constant have a particular value of course every material has a specific value every element Okay, so it's different for each of them. Yeah, because now I'm going to tell you how to find this. Don't worry about it. Now we're going to look at the half life, and half life is basically it is defined as the time taken for number of undecayed radioactive nuclei present in a sample to reduce to exactly half of its original number in the start okay this is number not uh, I know okay so you know this definition from uh, like all of us as well so don't worry about that what we don't know is the question where he's going to say that prove that the time of half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over lambda this will come where t half is the half-life like it is one whole symbol it's not like t is getting half it's like a subscript okay do remember that now so you can pick any formula it's not necessary which one you need so you can use n equals to n naught e minus lambda t and then you already know that at time of half life basically n will be exactly half of the initial value that's what the definition says right is 
Is that clear? Everybody? Yes. Okay. Now, now, check this out. So what I can do is I can replace it. If I say n, if I replace it, I can replace it with n over two at n naught e minus lambda, and instead of t, I can say t of half life. That's the time I'm looking for. And then n naught and n naught will cancel out, so I will be left with half equals to e minus lambda t half. And then I can take ln. When you take ln half, it is going to be ln e minus lambda t half. In logs, when you have like ln e, so the power can be multiplied outside. So ln half basically becomes like you can do it like this so to bring it to up the power becomes like uh, comes outside here it will be minus lambda t half multiplied by ln e by the way ln e is just equal to one so what you can do is you can write minus ln 2 equals to minus lambda t of half and then minus minus cancels out so t half will become ln 2 over lambda. Now if you use your calculator, like you don't need to do anything except for pressing ln. ln is the key right here. Okay, press ln and then write 2. So you're going to get exactly 0 0.693 over lambda. So this means that if we have the time constant of a particular material, we can find the half-life of that. Or vice versa, if we have the half-life of a particular material, we can find the time constant of it. Is it clear, everyone? This derivation is included in your course, and of course, this will you know come in your exam as well, so you should remember this. In about 10 minutes, when the meeting ends, if we are not finished, you guys need to rejoin. Okay, now, so when you draw a decay curve, if you have, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Ramin, why aren't you talking to us? Are you Naraz? No, sir, just, I don't know what to ask. No, no, I'm asking about Ramin. I know you're not okay. Naraz from me, okay. Probably Ramin's mic is not working. All right. So then, if you make an exponential curve like this, right? Like this. So you guys need to remember that this value in the start is n naught. Okay. So exactly when, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So exactly here, it will be n naught by 2. And that's when you can check like you go straight and this is where you can check the time so this will be the first half life which means that this is the amount of time it has taken to become half and then uh, for the next one then n naught by 4 so this is half again so again if you go so it will be basically the same amount of time time of half life and you can you know keep on doing that for eternity so what you need to do is that you guys need to remember that after one half life basically n over two are left so after two half lives it's going to be n over four right so it's like after three half lives it's going to be n over 8 left. So basically, what we can understand from this is that after nth half-life, we will have n naught divided by 2 raised to power n left. Like next will be like a power of 4, then power of 5, and power of, and then you can get the answer directly. Is it clear? So now it is just 0. It will never go zero. It will never reach zero. That's the point. point. Okay, Ramin, it's all right. All right, is it clear, everyone? So why half, like a material can never be zero? Like it can one day, it cannot be. 
like because if you divide like 4 divided by 2 right and then you divide by 2 again and then you divide by 2 you keep on dividing you see the value never ever becomes 0 it's getting smaller but never 0 do you guys understand this this is the reason that this curve will never touch x-axis that's why all right pretty cool right so will the axis reverse this no they will ask you to find values through it okay probably okay. but it's very easy it's not a big deal now on to activity activity is basically defined as the number of disintegrations of unstable nuclei per unit time and that's very important it is a scalar quantity because it's just a number and it is measured in Becquerel's, Becquerel's, okay? So Becquerel's is BQ. It's the scientist named Henry Becquerel who basically uh, found this. And if you remember in all levels, you might have learned about GM counter and hydrogen bubble chamber and stuff like that. So basically it, it's that value that comes as a count rate. And the most important formula in this is that activity is equal to lambda which is the decay constant times n and also I've just told you with respect to you know the graph it would be like this all right now this is very important because here this formula is used like every single time activity this is decay constant and this is number of particles that's important to understand Okay. Okay. Now let's do a question here. So the question says a meritium two four one. has a half-life of 433 years, one gram of sample is selected. Number one, it says determine the decay constant of the sample and then to determine the number of isotopes of americium 241 still radioactive after 866 years and then finally you could do like you need more time determine the fraction remaining radioactive after thousand years okay so these are the three questions they've asked okay so let's do the first one then first one is pretty easy because um, if you look at it we already know that the time of half life is given by 0 0.693 divided by lambda 
we want to find the decay constant so what are we going to do we're going to subtract divide it by this now they can ask you decay constant in a number of things like if they say find it in years you just write 433 if they say find it in days you multiply by 365 if they say in hours you multiply by 24 if they say in minutes 60 if they say in seconds then you have to do all of this so currently i'm interested in seconds so it is going to be like this is it clear So always look at the answer space whenever you're dealing with this, these type of questions because the answer space is going to tell you what exactly they want from you. So that's pretty important. And then the next one, which is um, determine the number of isotopes. Still after this. Okay. So first of all we know that if one half-life is equivalent to 433 years then in 866 years we will have two half-lives right that we need to remember we need to know okay so now keeping that in mind so first of all we exactly don't know how many particles were there so we need to find the particles right so first of all we're going to use number of moles e is equal to mass in grams over mr so the mass was one gram divided by mr was 241 so we end up with 4.149 times 10 raised to minus 3 moles then we can find the number of particles which are moles over Avogadro's constant Okay, now, um, so basically it is like a number of uh, moles times Avogadro's constant. So it's going to be 4.149 times 10 raised to minus 3. And Avogadro's constant will be 6.023 times 10 raised to power 23. And this is going to give me like 2.4988 times 10 raised to power 21 particles. Okay, now. Um, so now basically we have two half-lives and we already know that basically the number of particles are equal to n over 2 raised to power n. So basically total particles are here 249, 2.4988 and 10 raised to power 21 divided by 2 raised to power 2 because we have two half-lives. And then from this you would get about 6.25 times 10 raised to power 20 particles. So that's as simple as this. So obviously some of the ideal guesses will be here because the examiner likes ideal guesses so much. So you guys need Sarah, to can you explain the last part again? Uh, the, how, uh, the number of particles one? Yes sir, after the number of particles. So the number of particles that I found, right? The total number. You yeah, need to remember that basically uh, the half-life is like in two half-lives, right? Uh, they will be like it means that you got to find like two half life means that n naught will be half twice right like this so or alternatively you can basically write it as n equals to n naught 2 raised to power n where this n is the number of half lives do you understand 
So doing half, half, half again and again basically is a redundant thing. You can di directly do it with a formula. In all levels, this formula was not taught to you. That's why. Okay. Okay. So this is a quicker way of uh, finding, you know, the current number. If you have exact number of half lives, that's fine. Okay. You guys have any questions? Please let me know. Moiz and uh, Gatika and Rafi and Ramin, everybody else. Okay, so now, then, like going to uh, uh, determine the fraction remaining, this is pretty easy, very simple, uh, because it is exactly like a different number, 1000 years, which is not uh, like a multiple 80, 66. Whenever this comes, I would like to use n equals to n naught e minus lambda t. Okay, I don't like this color at all. Let me make it red. So what you're gonna do is, you know, you can basically do uh, use any formula, it doesn't really matter. So I can divide n over n naught. This will give you me a fraction and this will be lambda t. So we already have the decay constant, which is minus 5.15 times 10 raised to minus 11. That's, that's what we found in the very first part. And because the decay constant is in seconds, we also need to change 1000 years in seconds, which is like really sad. So 365 times, this is time I'm changing, okay? 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And this whole, when you take the exponential of this, this is going to be 0 0.197. And if they say you want percentage, you can multiply this by percentage, which is equivalent to, uh, 19.7% are remaining. Is that clear everybody?